I recently purchased this Corvette and it's the 1LT Z51 model with MagRide, but it doesn't have home link in the visor. So I'm stuck using that little clip on push button garage door opener and it's driving me nuts. So what I did is I went online and I found the part number for the fancier version of the Corvette and I got one that's got the home link buttons. And today I'm gonna show you how to install this piece. Furthermore, I'll show you how to piggyback off that to install a radar detector, a dash cam, whatever you might wanna wire in. Some people do believe that that is a constant on power source. However, in my testing, I found that it has about a 10 minute timeout. Whenever you open the door or start the ignition or the engine on the car, it turns power onto the visor. When you shut everything, about 10 minutes later, it all turns off. And I'm assuming that's for battery drain down protection. The first step is gonna be to remove the roof, but I assume all of you know how to do that. Next, we need to pop off this little plastic cover to reveal the screws that hold on the stem of the visor here. You have the slot here, which you can basically just kind of pull that out. Next, you need a little ratchet with a T15, and there's a couple of screws we need to take out. Next, we need to pop off the little cover in the back here. I'm gonna try a little pick that I've covered in tape. There we go, that's the ticket. Oh, it's a little hinge. And we've got another T15 up here. For now, we're keeping the visor in here. We need to start removing some of this headliner trim. We're gonna use the pry tool and kind of get in here. And you don't wanna damage anything, but you do wanna pry this back. It's a little tough. There's a little clip in there that you wanna work out. I think we need to pop off a little more on that end too. There we go. Didn't mean to do that. So looking in here, I can already see where the plug is. There's our plug right there. That's what we need to get to. You wanna pull the little red tab out, then you're gonna squeeze and unplug it. With that plug unhooked, it's a good idea to check the voltage just to see what we're getting out there. The black's gonna go to the black and the red's gonna go to the green with the stripe. And we're getting 12 volts exactly like we expected to see. Make sure not to short it out, obviously. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that there's this little hook that's currently keeping that mirror in place and the wiring kind of runs through this area. You'll need to unclip that to be able to get the mirror down and you'll have to do that through through the opening there. So I just realized there's also a little retaining ring that goes on top and I think we'll need to pick that up. It just goes on this cylinder here. That took a little bit of prying. So here are the two mirrors and essentially the difference is you get home link. Otherwise, they're basically exactly the same. This is the pigtail that I made for my radar detector. And it's got these pins back here that we can use inside the connector and then kind of snake through to plug it in. I also left two leads on it that we'll wrap up with electrical tape once we know we have a good connection. That's gonna be for my dash cam, which hasn't arrived yet. The dash cam is gonna need a 12 to five volt step down transformer. Dash cams are usually five volt. The little pins back here, I shaved down just a little bit by snipping them just so they fit better. But I'll link you to where I got this and you can just modify it really easily to add more connection just with a soldering gun and some heat shrink. It's honestly like really, really simple. And if you're just doing a radar detector, Maybe trim down the little ends to fit better and plug it right in. So in the back here, I'm gonna plug red into red, black into black. It's pretty much as simple as something like this can get. So here's the final result. I even threw a little zip tie on it just to keep everything in place, but red's in red, black's in black. Now the little pigtail, we're gonna shove through the headliner and out probably right in the corner here and then we'll install the mirror. You wanna shove the cabling back into the mirror hole because obviously otherwise you won't be able to get the mirror in there and then just hang the mirror on the little visor clip 
so you can get back up here and push the little pigtail through to where you need it to go. So there's where our wire came out, and that's the back side. You can see where I was able to use my fingers to push it through. The rest of the installation is essentially the reverse. I'm gonna hop in and kind of show you how that works. that's in there. We can now reassemble the top trim, and I think doing it in reverse is a lot easier than taking it off. It's the way it is with a lot of these kind of things. Get our weather stripping out of the way, though. go around the car make sure the weather stripping is tucked over the headliner and just give everything a nice little push to make sure you're not gonna get any rattles and that the headliner is good to go you can pop up the visor make sure you still have light now this it has about a 10 minute timer when you open the door or start the engine you'll get power but after 10 minutes, it'll turn off unless the engine's running. You can also plug in your radar detector, make sure it works. Good, we're working. Now we can put the screws back in. You have to pop the visor down to get these in. Now you can install this little bit. I think. There's only like one way that it goes on. You just want to measure it up first. Close that little cover and you're all set. Just make sure all your weather stripping's good. Well, there we go. I got my Uniden R7 plugged in and I kind of tucked it here in the corner. Now the windshield wraps, so it makes it sit a little off axis, but it points straight. And that's the most important part. And also it is high up which on such a low car helps you get a signal earlier. I would not stick it like right down there. That is almost certainly gonna reduce your range quite a bit. The other option is to reach it down and get it behind the mirror, which can be good. The problem is I tried it there, but then I couldn't really see it. And having it kind of over here was also problematic because it was just kind of getting in my field of vision more. And here we have the home link in the visor. And as you can see, mine does work. So if I push that button, I've got a door opening. Push the other button, got another door opening. As far as actually programming the home link, I'm gonna give you the basics, but I think it's gonna depend a little on your actual garage door opener units. The instructions I saw in a lot of tutorials and you know the manual and all that, they were a little different than what I had to do. What I did that worked for me is I pushed the program button on my actual garage door opener. Then while it was blinking away telling me it's in program mode, I held these two outside buttons until that red light stopped being solid and started blinking. Then I let go and then I took my secondary remote, I pushed the button that I wanted to train the home link to and then I pushed the home link button that I wanted to learn it to. And then once I saw it start blinking rapidly again, I knew that it had learned. At that point, I had to go back to my garage door opener, hit the program button again, and now it was in a different mode. It was waiting to get the signal back. So instead of kind of doing a rapid blink, the actual like light on it was blinking really fast in the initial program mode it had a different modality to it. And then I basically walked back over, I pushed the button that I had trained, it stopped blinking, I pushed it again, and it opened the garage door. I've seen some other people be able to just program it by holding the button on the remote when in programming mode. I've seen people that said they only needed to hit the program button after they already did this step and then use the remote. I think it's all gonna depend on your particular 
garage door opener unit. I don't think they're all exactly the same, and I've always found it to be a bit of a pain, like every new car I get, when I've moved house, things like that. It's just always some new thing I've got to learn to make it work right. Well, let's talk a little about the install and some of the pitfalls and challenges you may face. I think overall, it's quite an easy install. There's a few things to be concerned about, and that's when you're pulling down kind of that headliner trim. I don't know really what to call it, the pillar trim, I suppose. When you pull that down, it does take some amount of force. It is plastic lined in the back. Just be careful not to break it. These new cars still have very pliable plastic. You shouldn't have too much trouble, but just be aware that while you will need to use some muscle, you do need to also be careful and precise with what you're doing. Don't just rip at it. Furthermore, when you're working with the wiring, you wanna make sure you don't short anything out. So if you're building your own harness like I showed, or you're using a pre-made one, you just wanna make sure you don't short anything and wind up having to replace a fuse, which could be annoying if you do because there's two fuse boxes that I'm aware of. There's one kind of behind the phone charging, phone placement area between the seats below the speaker. You have to kind of pry all that off to get to it. And there's one inside the glove box. Again, you gotta pry some stuff out of the way to get to. So generally, it's best if you can avoid shorting stuff out. If you're wiring a dash cam or a device that is not a 12 volt device, you will need a transformer. Dash cams are almost always designed for USB power. They're using five volts. You'll typically need to buy a hardwire kit, or you can just buy your own step down transformer. And I'll link to one that I've used in the past below in the description as well as the little harness that I use to connect the radar detector in case you wanna just use that or base your own harness off of it by kind of splicing and soldering. I didn't get through the soldering and all that stuff in this video. I figure there's a lot of other videos on that. Before I wrap up the video, I did wanna mention for those of you that might be new to the channel, maybe you're finding it because I started posting this Corvette content. I do a lot of detailing videos as well as car mods across a bunch of platforms. If you like the content, if you wanna learn more about what I'm gonna do with a Corvette, or even about my other projects and detailing, definitely stick around. I hope you hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and leave me a nice comment. I do love talking to all of you, so if you have questions, if you have suggestions, stuff you wanna chat about, do hit me up and I will gladly talk to you. And I hope to see you soon in a future video.